So I'm Aaron Hesse, as it says, and I wanted to talk to you today about my slideshow. Uh, there, disruption. <laughs> Technology is driving disruption. <laughs> With in markets around the world and with presentations at TEDx. <laughs> and if you're like me, you're probably wondering when you're watching these markets be disrupted by technology, uh, who's next? And I've, I've been building buildings, uh, high performance buildings uh, as an electrical engineer for, for some time now. And I've noticed that there are a couple of trends that I wanted to talk to you today about. And I, I think that they're going to significantly impact the way utilities do business in the near future. Uh, so I wanted to tell you about what those trends are, uh, wh why the utilities matter, and how the utilities will need to fundamentally change their business model in order to avoid what analysts are calling the utility death spiral. So buildings are, are, are trend, trend number one, uh, buildings are increasingly more connected, more intelligent. Uh, filled with more networked devices. Uh, devices that are, are imbued with almost this magical property where they're able to significantly reduce the amount of energy that buildings need to, uh, in order to operate. And we call this trend network convergence. Uh, that is, the, uh, what used to be separate, uh, non-interacting systems all throughout buildings are now being converged onto a single network platform. And these are uh, devices that you might not necessarily expect. For example, in hospitals, all nurse call systems are being given their own network cable and unique IP addresses on the network. Uh, it also includes clocks in schools and their intercom systems, even the heating and cooling systems, and right down to individual plug loads in walls in commercial buildings. Um, and what this is doing is it's, it's, uh, it's adding a lot of infrastructure into the walls and into the basements. A lot, a lot of what I do um, is not something that you see very, very often. It sort of happens behind the scenes. But in the basement, what you probably used to call a, a phone closet now looks probably something like this. <laughs> and and this, is, uh, this is a little bit extreme, but it's not super uncommon. And in this building, there's probably one. Uh, a lot like this. I tried to find it, but it's probably behind a locked door, and I, I couldn't. But I'm guessing there's one somewhere nearby. Uh, however, in new construction, when, when it's done correctly, it looks more like this. And it's kind of an intimidating picture, right? Because this just kind of illustrates the, the amount of planning and, and engineering that goes into what used to just be basic lighting systems. And these, these, these systems are, are, are uh, allowing building managers to do some cool things, like fine tune the amount of energy that's being used by all of these different electronic devices in their building. Uh, but where the magic really happens is actually when all of these devices start talking to each other. So for example, now as standard practice, we install lighting control systems that uh, uh, have a feature called daylight harvesting, where the light fixture in the ceiling closest to the window has a sensor in it and senses the amount of light coming in through the window. And it'll dim down to maybe 20% light output because you know, there's no point in illuminating a, an area that's already lit by a window. But it'll also tell the light next to it, further away from the window, dim down to 50%. And then the light next to it, further away from the window, uh, remain on at 100 or 90, depending on how much light is coming in. And that'll change over the day to keep the amount of light on a desk or on you know, an office space constant throughout, throughout the changing day. And this is dramatically decreasing the amount of energy that buildings were, are consuming in order to operate on their daily function. And all of these devices are actually, um, you know, all given their own unique IP address. And now with this new standard that came out called IP version 6, it came out in, in 2012, uh, we now have enough unique IP addresses to fill every square inch of the planet with a million individual unique addresses. <laughs> so, and, and this, is, this is a trend that's not expected to stop. Uh, last year, Gartner predicted that there were 6.3 billion devices uh, in the world, and that was expected to increase to over 20 billion by 2020. Uh, so the, the, this, is, this is going to continue, and buildings will continue to be more interconnected and intelligent, and the amount of energy that's being required for them is going to decrease, uh, decrease very rapidly. 
Let's keep that in mind as we move on to trend number two. Earlier this year, Kauai partnered with Tesla to build a massive solar array of capable of producing 13 megawatts of electricity. And what's unique about this particular solar array is it also comes with a 52 megawatt hour uh, battery array. Uh, for those of you who are curious, it's about three quarter of a million automotive batteries in capacity. So, so it's, it's huge. And what's special about this is that the solar arrays, um, you know, if you're familiar with the way solar functions, the electricity that's generated kind of goes up and down throughout the days and nights and depending on the weather. Uh, but demand doesn't, and they don't necessarily match up. So there's a lot of inefficiency that happens when you can generate more electricity than you need. But when you compare it with a battery storage device like this, uh, the solar array just powers the batteries, and then the island can be powered from the batteries constantly. And uh, previously, Kauai used to rely primarily on uh, diesel and gas generating turbines for their electricity. And with this new solar array, they're uh, estimating that they're going to reduce their use of imported oil from the mainland by 1.6 million gallons of oil. But let's take that concept and let's, let's apply it to the way electricity is being generated and transmitted today. Uh, currently, the model, and you know, you're probably familiar with this, is there's huge generating facilities, whether it's hydro or gas facilities, and they rely on economies of scale, so they build them as large as possible, and then they use their own, utilities use their own distribution system to get that to the customer or to the, to the building or the industrial facility. Um, but what the, what the use of solar and, um, and, gen, and uh, battery on-site storage proves is that this may not necessarily be the way some buildings are, are required to be built. Um, we may in the future be providing more solar arrays on rooftops and then using batteries nearby to, to, um, to store that energy and then use it as, as needed. And we call this concept distributed generation. And this is being driven by the, the rapidly decreasing costs of solar panels, for example. Also, the, the rapidly decreasing costs of lithium-ion batteries. Uh, Tesla is recently completing a massive gigafactory, they call it, where they're going to dramatically reduce the cost of lithium-ion batteries. Uh, Sweden has a company called Northvolt doing something similar. So um, it won't be long now before it just makes financial sense to have some sort of on-site generation on a building combined with that, that cheap lithium-ion battery. Uh, this is an example of, um, of something that solar uh, roofing tiles and battery backup systems might look like on a home. This is made by Tesla. And uh, these solar roofing tiles are just one example of the many products that are going to become available. We all think of solar and we think about, you know, these huge ugly panels that, you know, nobody really wants on the roof. Uh, but what if the roofing tile themselves were able to generate that electricity? What if the, uh, an existing building, you could apply a uh, tint to the window that generated electricity? Uh, there's a lot of products like that, even right down to window blinds that you put in your home or in a commercial building that generates electricity and then stores uh, that electricity in a battery backup system. Uh, and this isn't just a possibility. This is a priority for many places. For example, Japan has mandated that all new buildings after 2020 will be able to store all the energy they need and discharge onto their building without using any electricity from the grid a concept called net zero. That is, they generate everything that they need on site. Uh, but also, California has mandated that all new homes be net zero homes by 2020, and all new commercial buildings be net zero by 2030. Uh, the U.S. government had, has decided that all new federal buildings will be net zero by 2030. And they wouldn't be able to do this without intelligent building systems driving down the amount of electricity required, combined with some sort of on-site generation. So, you may be surprised to find out that actually uh, the electricity that is sold in the U.S., and this is the Department of Energy figure, 75% of that electricity goes to powering buildings. And uh, what's, you know, what's concerning about that is, I, I don't know about you, but if I, if I were running a business and I saw that 75% of my customer base will soon have the technology to no longer need me, I would probably start, I'd probably start being a little bit concerned, <laughs> right? However, not, not everybody ha is, is really that concerned. Some utilities have been doing business the same way for over 100 years, and they're unwilling to change. And uh, some analysts, some market analysts, have, have predicted that what that's going to look like when they fail to change, when this technology disrupts the market and these utilities are unable to adapt, 
uh, is a process that they call the, the utility death spiral. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at the top and we're gonna walk, work around clockwise. Uh, we talked about distributed generation and in building intelligence. Those trends are going to continue. And the first thing that that's gonna do is it's gonna have a significant impact on the revenue of utilities. Uh, the problem with that though is that utilities have an enormous fixed cost. Their, uh, their distribution system, their generation facilities, they consume a, a, lot of, a, a lot of money just to maintain them, even when they're not selling electricity. It's completely independent of that. Uh, you can look at it a lot like um, splitting rent with roommates. So you've got six roommates and two guys get girlfriends, and now suddenly uh, there's four people left splitting the same rent. Your landlord doesn't change the rent, uh, but your portion goes up. So the first thing that utilities are going to want to do is increase rates. And when utility bills go up, people start looking for ways, especially if you're, you're a business owner and you own a building, you're going to start looking for ways to reduce your energy consumption and promote some sort of uh, generation on site so that you can decrease that, that cost to your business or to your household. So now we're back at the top, only with more momentum. More, more people will be pressured into distributed generation, more people into building intelligent systems. They'll be renovating and installing these systems to try to shed some of that cost. And this cycle creates a positive feedback loop. And that's what the analysts are calling the utility death spiral, ultimately ending in rates being astronomical and utilities going bankrupt. So uh, we're already starting to see some evidence to this too. A couple of years ago, Green Tech Media wrote, the energy sector is changing rapidly and utilities are reacting by buying up one another's assets in the search of the magical combination that will allow them to adapt to an increasingly distributed future. I thought that was kind of a mouthful. I kind of like this better. It's merger time in utility land. <laughs> and, and it's true, over uh, the last decade or so, what used to be about 100 investor-owned utilities has now all merged together down to about 50, about half. And like these other trends, it's not expected to, to stop. Uh, as utilities look for ways to spread out over a larger geographic region and, and, and more people, uh, the, they'll, they'll start looking for ways to, to get rid of that, those losses and mergers is, is probably one of the best ways to do that. So it's kind of a scary picture to paint, right? Um, I mean, obviously nobody wants that to happen. This is bad for, for everybody. Um, so let's, let's paint the other picture. And I think it's a really bright future too. I think it's got a lot of opportunity and, and, and a, lot of, um, you know, a lot of positive things for everybody. So let's go back to that original, that orig original model, right? We've got the central generation facilities that are uh, you know, sending electricity over the power wires to your home. Uh, I, I think that right now, utilities really focus on their generating abilities. That's their, their bread and butter. That's how, they, that's how they make money, right? It's they're able to generate electricity and sell it. Um, but a lot like so many other companies, I think the utilities of the future are going to need to shift their thinking away from their product and more on getting how they get that product to the customer, more on their distribution systems, less on their generation systems. Uh, so you can kind of think of it the way uh, Amazon has um, outgrown being just a bookseller. Now it's an open marketplace. Now anybody can jump on to Amazon with a product and sell their product really effectively to a very specified audi audience with lots of advertising and it's a great way for them to create money and Amazon just takes a cut because they're really good at the distribution part even if they're not necessarily selling their own products. So that, that I think that looks a lot more like this model where we've got this energy marketplace where if you're a consumer of electricity, you can log into some website and choose which sources of energy you would like to purchase from. Uh, for example, you may want to purchase all, um, you know, all solar for your home, for example, and there may be a premium for that, but it wouldn't be that different from going to the grocery store and buying organic produce if that's something that you felt was important. Uh, but if you're an enterprising individual and you saw this marketplace, there's tons of opportunity for you to get involved. Uh, the, the utility owned generation facilities will just be one of many options for you to purchase electricity, but there'll be lots of other private people who want to jump in there and sell electricity as well. Uh, for example, um, you may want to enter in what's known as an electrical arbitrage market where you have this huge solar, uh, you have this huge battery array and all you do is go to like the, the industrial facility nearby 
tell them, hey, if uh, you want to avoid charges when, you're, when your peaks are high for electricity, I can, I can absorb electricity from the grid and sell it to you when you need it the most and, and save you some money. Uh, but you could also, for example, have your own generating facility if you wanted to get together with a community and have your own uh, solar and battery plant and be sort of separated from the grid and just, you know, maintain that uh, grid for your community. You could do that. Uh, you, there's lots of opportunities for even buildings themselves to sell the excess energy that they generate back into that market. So what this does is it, it, it allows normal market forces to return to the utility industry. It allows more choice for customers on what they want and, and less, less choice based on uh, you know, some external forces not, not related to the customer. Uh, so I see this as being a, a bright future as long as utilities are, are willing to, to innovate, focus on, focus on changing their ways and their, their business model, the, the way they've been doing business for the past 100 years, and adapt to the disruptive changes just over the horizon.